This is a short film about what English society was like a thousand years ago when the Anglo-Saxons ruled the country. Anglo-Saxon society effectively existed in a hierarchy with a few individuals at the top and then going down in layers to most people at the bottom. Well, at the very bottom, there was a small underclass of slaves. At the top of the hierarchy was, of course, the king who owned the whole of England. He gave out land to the earls, large bits of land to the earls, who then, the earls gave it some, some of the bits of land to the thanes. Two types of peasants, the curls and normal peasants, worked the land with slaves uh, helping all other levels of society. So peasants had to work on the land of a particular thing and weren't allowed to move off it at all. Whereas the curls were peasants who uh, were slightly richer. They could rent land. If they didn't like the thing they were working for, they could move to another thane's land. The thanes were like the local lords of the manor who owned bits of land about the size of Great Torrington and the earls owned huge tracts of land about the size of Devon. Now, in Saxon society, you could move up and down the levels of society. So, for example, if you're a peasant and you worked hard, you might become a curl. And then if you owned enough land and became rich enough and began to pay taxes, you might become a thane one day. Whereas if you were a peasant, for example, you didn't have enough food, then you could sell members of your family into slavery for, for money um, so that the rest of your family could survive. Now, the king uh, had several responsibilities. He was expected to make laws uh, to make sure the country functioned properly. He gave and took land from his followers, so those that he liked, he gave more land to. And also he was expected to raise an army to protect the country in case of invasion. And in return, the people of his kingdom were expected to obey the king's laws. They were also expected to pay any taxes that the king would want to raise, and they were also expected to go and fight in the army at times of war. And this provided a large, mostly untrained army called the feared in cases of emergency. Now, the king had to prove on the battlefield that he was a great warrior. This was really important to the earls and the thanes following the king. Um, and if he didn't prove that he was a great warrior, then they were more likely not to support him. But if he was victorious in battle, then they would support him. Now, the earls had various responsibilities that came with the large tracts of land the king gave them. They were expected to help govern the different parts of land that they were given um, and make sure the king's laws were being put into place. They were also expected to collect taxes on behalf of the king. And in return, they could keep a third of any taxes they collected, making them incredibly rich. And sometimes some things became richer, someone else became richer than the king. And they were also expected to maintain an elite uh, group of soldiers called the house cards that the king could call in, in emergencies. So um, it was the earl's responsibility to keep law and order in the bits of the country that they ruled. And their their areas, the shires that they uh, ruled, were, were broken up into different parts. Um, and it was up to the shire reeve to maintain law and order in different parts of the shire. This is, where, of course, where the word shire, sheriff comes from. And the shire was divided into hundreds and then into tithings. And a tithing was about uh, 10 households. And if a crime was committed then uh, it was up to all the people in the tithing to find the person who committed the crime. And this was called the hue and cry. So when it was raised, they all charge about looking for the person who committed the crime within their tithing. And if they couldn't find who committed the crime, then the whole of the tithing would be punished. And as you can imagine, in Anglo-Saxon England, some of these punishments were really brutal. The Earl also provided um, a place of sanctuary in case of enemy attack, for example, if marauding Vikings came along. Um, and this was a fortified area, um, sort of like a castle, but they were usually just elaborate earthworks, and these were called a burr. And it was in these burrs also that markets were held, and they became a, a focal, for trade, focal point for trade. And there were burrs throughout, um, throughout Anglo-Saxon England, and some of these developed into, into towns. Uh, and in Anglo-Saxon England, some of the biggest towns like York and London began to develop. They're about 10,000 people um, large. Now, in England, in Anglo-Saxon time, you'd probably be shot by the amount of sheep there were because um, wool was one of the biggest exports 
for the Anglo-Saxons. They uh, sent it mostly to the Netherlands and to Germany, uh, and they had a flourishing trade. The Anglo-Saxons were also very religious. Uh, Christianity had come to England about 500 years uh, before uh, 1066 and was, was flourishing. Uh, so there were bishops and there were priests. But also uh, in England, there were lots and lots of monasteries and uh, nunneries where monks and nuns gave up their, their lives to go and, and worship God. But most Anglo-Saxons, they'd usually uh, have contact with the church through their local priest. Now, their local priest could get married, uh, unlike later on in Norman England. Um, and they were often uneducated and, and were, were hard to distinguish, really, from, from the other peasants. And that is what you need to know about Anglo-Saxon society.